ओके वेलकम गाइस इन दिस टॉपिक वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट फिनाइल एलेनिन हाउ द फिनाइल एलेनिन इज नॉर्मली मेटाबोलाइज एंड द एसोसिएटेड क्लिनिकल डिसऑर्डर दैट इज फिनाइल कीटोन यूरिया सो व्हाट आर द बेसिक प्रॉपर्टीज वी नो अबाउट फिनाइल एलेनिन दैट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन अर्लियर सेशंस फिनाइल एलेनिन एज द नेम सजेस्ट फैन इन द नेम सो आई कैन से इट इज अ एरोमेटिक अमीनो एसिड इट इज एरोमेटिक अमीनो एसिड the it is a uh, essential amino acid the mnemonic for essential we have discussed earlier that was tv till 9 pmh p is essential then we know that it is a keto plus glucogenic amino acid it is a keto plus glucogenic amino acid so these are few properties that we have discussed earlier in the phenyl alanine uh, when we have discussed in the earlier session about the classification part now when it comes to the metabolism of the phenyl alanine if we see the the normal metabolism of phenylalanine how it occurs so that we can easily understand how the if there will be any error how it is going to manifest to us so the when it comes to the metabolism of phenylalanine what you can appreciate is that the phenylalanine converts into can convert into tyrosine can convert into tyrosine and for that the name of the enzyme is phenyl alanine hydroxylase phenyl alanine can convert into tyrosine and for that the name of the enzyme is phenyl alanine hydroxylase in the same reaction we require a coenzyme and that is with the name of bh4 that is also referred as tetrahydrobiopterin that is referred as tetrahydrobiopterin this bh4 will convert into bh2 and that is referred as dihydrobiopterin it is referred as dihydrobiopterin so tetrahydro will convert into dihydro so in order to do this reaction again and again what we need basically is that let's say you have uh, multiple molecules of phenylalanine and you want to do this reaction again and again so you require multiple molecules phenylalanine hydroxylase and you require multiple molecules of bh4 now to generate the bh4 again and again what we can do is we can convert this bh2 molecule back into bh4 and in order to do that to convert the bh2 into bh4 what you need to do is you need to add two molecules of hydrogen and we know that whenever we add hydrogen to any molecule that is called as reduction reaction if you add oxygen that is called as oxidation if you add hydrogen that is called as reduction reaction so the name of the enzyme is going to be the bh2 reductase the name of the enzyme is going to be bh2 reductase so ultimately we require basically we are requiring two enzymes to convert the phenyl alanine to tyrosine we require one is the hydroxylase and second is the reductase these are the the, the main enzyme that is required for the metabolism of phenyl alanine mm -hmm. if there is deficiency of any of these two enzyme the phenyl alanine is not going to be metabolized it is going to be accumulating in the body right so that will come under the category of phenyl alanine metabolism error so let's write down the heading is phenyl alanine metabolism error how the phenylalanine metabolism defect will manifest in the body phenylalanine metabolism error so to understand this i am just writing this again uh, reaction again uh, in the same way that phenylalanine converts into tyrosine converts into tyrosine we have written that the the first name of the enzyme that is required is phenyl alanine hydroxylase and the second thing that we require is the bh4 that converts into bh2 dihydrobiopterin and that has to be reused by giving two hydrogens and the name of the enzyme is bh2 reductase so these are the two key enzymes that we have in involved in the phenyl alanine metabolism if there is deficiency of either of the enzymes say for example if there is deficiency of phenyl alanine hydroxylase or if there is deficiency of bh2 reductase if there is deficiency of either of the enzyme what is going to happen is that this reaction is not going to take place whether there is deficiency of hydroxylase or reductase this reaction is not going to take place so this phenyl alanine is going to increase in the body this increased amount of phenylalanine will enter into a alternate pathway will enter into alternate pathway and will convert into a ketone version will convert into a ketone version of the phenylalanine 
the ketone version that we are going to see is phenyl acetate and phenyl pyruvate phenyl acetate and phenyl pyruvate we are more concerned with the phenyl acetate part so i am i am highlighting the phenyl acetate one so we are going to generate the ketone versions such as phenyl acetate and phenyl pyruvate and these ketone versions because ketone bodies are water soluble so they will come in the urine they will come in the urine so basically what is happening is if there is deficiency of either of the enzyme you can easily appreciate that the ketone version of the phenyl alanine will come in the urine right so this particular disease where the ketone version of the phenyl alanine is coming in the urine this is referred as phenyl ketone urea so if there is deficiency of phenyl alanine hydroxylase leading to phenyl ketone urea this is called as phenyl ketone urea type 1 this is referred as phenyl ketone urea type 1 and this is referred as phenyl ketone urea type 2 so whether it is type 1 or type 2 the manifestations are going to be the same ultimately the ketones are going to come in the urine right so uh, whether it is hydroxylase deficiency or reductase deficiency it is going to manifest as the same way so what are the clinical features and how we have to suspect that whether this child is uh, suffering from the phenyl ketone urea or not right so what are the clinical features that are going to be there to understand the clinical feature see what i can say is when the uh, when the fetus is there in the uterus let's say this is the representation of the intrauterine life now what is happening is there is the placental connection which is there from the mother to the uh, child so what is happening is whether the fetus is able to produce these critical enzymes these two critical enzymes hydroxylase and reductase whether the fetus is able to produce or not it is not going to manifest the reason is the maternal enzymes can easily travel and will do the reaction in the child will do the reaction in the fetus the maternal enzymes can easily come and can easily do the reaction in the fetus right so there will not be any manifestation in the fetus fetal life once the once the child is delivered now there is no maternal enzymes will be coming once the child is out this neonate now there is no maternal enzymes the maternal enzymes will be washed out uh, within the first 72 to 96 hours right so they will be washed out within the first 72 hours mainly so the maternal enzymes supply now no maternal enzyme i can say now the child has to produce its own hydroxylase its own reductase and if it fails to do then the symptoms will appear right so what i can say is when it comes to the clinical feature when it comes to the clinical feature of phenyl ketone urea i can say the child will be completely normal at birth will be completely normal at birth so i can say is normal at birth the reason is very obvious i told you that the maternal enzymes has done the part so there will not be any manifestation at birth the manifestation will start occurring after 72 hours right because the half life of the maternal enzymes hydroxylase reductase is 72 hours so i can say after 72 hours the maternal enzymes will be washed out from the neonate now the symptoms will start appearing the phenyl alanine will be unable to metabolize so the child will have nausea will have vomiting will have nausea and vomiting ultimately what is going to happen is the ketones are going to come in the urine and one of the ketone that i have mentioned one of them is phenyl acetate phenyl acetate will appear in urine now why we are interested more in phenyl acetate the reason is phenyl acetate has a very peculiar odor that it smells like mouse it has mousey smell it has mousey smell so the urine of this neonate will have mousey odor and they ask this question that mousey odor in phenyl ketone urea occurs due to which molecule presence of which molecule it is not the phenyl alanine it is not the phenyl pyruvate it is the phenyl acetate which is culprit for this now if this continues to happen the child in future will have profound mental retardation there will be profound mental retardation in future so this is how the child is going to present there will be normal at birth the later on the life from the 72 hours onwards the child will have start manifestation nausea or vomiting 
lethargy may be there then there will be uh, the the phenyl acetate will be coming in the urine that will lead to mousy odor and ultimately in the later part of the life he might end up in the profound mental retardation so how to investigate this patient when it comes to the investigation part we have certain set of test the first test that we can do is something called as guthrie's test guthrie's test and the ferric chloride test these are the two tests which can be used for screening these are the two tests which are used for screening of the phenylketonuria and one more test that is used for confirmation and that is called as the tandem mass spectrometry tandem mass spectrometry we can say that it is basically the investigation of choice the investigation choice for phenylketonuria is tandem mass spectrometry now how to treat this patient when it comes to the treatment part what we need to do is we need to avoid the phenylalanine in diet so the child has to be supplemented with the phenylalanine free diet avoid phenylalanine in diet we need to eliminate the phenylalanine from the diet so such supplements are available in the market where the phenylalanine is not there and that is going to be used as a supplement for this child so this is all about the phenylalanine Uh, amino acid and its metabolism and the manifestation of the phenylketonuria yes thank you guys